before we start. Hello, um, I'm Sarah Dennis. I'm the information manager for the Cardiomyopathy Association, and that's a charity in the UK that offers information and support to people who are affected by cardiomyopathy. Um, cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart muscle, um, and it can cause sudden unexpected death in young people but it's also a condition that if it's discovered it can be treated with drugs and surgery and many of our members go on to live long and quite full lives. Um, the organisation was started by an American woman called um, Carolyn Biro um, and she had the condition and found that when she was living in this country she had very little um, support. Well, there's no support, there are no real charities to, to help people with cardiomyopathy. So she set the organisation up in eight, 1989. So you may need to cycle so a bit. Mm -hmm. I probably need a drink. Um, Do you want to get it? Water, glass water or something? Um, it's all right, sorry. Uh, she was an American lady who came over here and discovered there, were, there was no one really offering support to sufferers. And she set the organisation up in her house initially in Watford and we now have um, an office there with, with five staff and, and we've got a, a large number of trustees um, who sort of drive the organisation. Um, in the past we have, the charity has been more support, supportive perhaps of presumed consent than it, than it is now. Um, we found that there was actually a very diverse view of opinion within the association. We have some members who've um, waiting for transplants, we've got some members who've got relatives who, who've died waiting for transplants, but we, we reflect all sort of society's opinions really, there are other members who um, um, you know, may need a transplant at some point that are a bit concerned about presumed consent, so we've, we've got a wide variety of opinion and we try to reflect that. Um, we are supportive of the UK transplant register and uh, we, we do stories about them in our magazines and we, we'll carry pictures of the, of the donor cards that a lot of people in this country carry and we've also done stories about the fact that the, the register is 10 years old this year um, and as part of its sort of 10 year celebrations it's trying to get 1 million new donors onto the register this year by the end of um, October and I, I understand it's already got 700,000 donors on there this year. Um, now the uh, registry, um, e even though you register as a donor, uh, do you, the uh, hospital still needs the family to consent to the donation, is that how it works? They do, generally they do do seek to get that. Um, I, think, I think this is a difficult area really for, for doctors and for families but I think um, the fact that you have said on a register that you want to donate and it's there for doctors to see, it, it helps them um, and helps them know that you want to give your organs. So I think, I think that is helpful but that's true. If, if um, if families are very anti this happening, then it does, it does mean that you know, the, the consent may not be given. Um, there's, um, there, there was a, uh, uh, a desire, I think it was in 2004, for presumed consent to get passed in Britain. Do you recall? Yes, there was, there was a human tissues bill which looked at sort of all areas and that really was drawn up by the government in response to a couple which of Which party scandals. was that? It, it was the government. The government? Bill. Oh, okay. And it was really in response to, um, there were a couple of instances, there was two hospitals where it was found that um, doctors had been taking organs from from children who had died and storing them without um, the consent of the parents, which is always supposed to be given. Mm -hmm. And that caused an enormous outcry and, and there were many, many very upset parents. And the, the bill really was to address that. And I don't think it helped the debate for presumed consent. Um, 
it made people fear that doctors are after organs and I think there is there is a fear with some people that that may encourage them to be taken before a patient is is actually dead or you know there may be an instance where they may recover um, I think I think that's one of the areas of concern and I know some of our members one one said to me that he knew of a case where um, doctors were asking for organs and, and they, the consent wasn't given and the patient then went on to recover so but I mean there is an area of concern here yes now the uh, the uh, bill that was brought forward in 2004 was brought by the Liberal Party, I believe. Do you recall any that of that? May, this was before I was... Before you... Be, I, know be, the, I know the Liberal Democrat Party were very keen on... Um, on bringing a, a bill. We were, are were quite supportive of... Right. Do you recall any of that? During, during that time that that was happening, or was it was it not a big media event? Like, do you recall um, it being? I mean, it, it what did get a lot of tension. Discussion, discussion. Yes, but right. I wasn't actually working for the. At that time, at that so. Time. Uh, I was doing something else. It, so it, it's not, right. My memory of it isn't. Right. Isn't brilliant. So when you came into the job, um, mm -hmm. I, I guess. The issue of whether to change the law wasn't a big one at that time since it already got rejected by the uh, government. Well, the, the presumed consent had been rejected, yes. It, it had yes. been rejected. So yes. when you came into the role, mm. or into that was one of the outstanding issues. For us, no. For, no, so it kind of died out, so to speak. Yeah, the, I mean, it, I don't know that it was an outstanding issue for us even then. I mean, it was, you know, something that we would have watched. Yeah. We're watching yeah. very carefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I, I guess, you know, there's concerns on both sides. Mm. Would you say they're balanced? Like, is there the same number of concerns on one side, like for it and against it? I think, I think some of the um, issues that came out of the problems with Alder Hay and at Bristol um, clouded the picture. And I think it probably made people more concerned about organ donation. About uh, doctors becoming like vultures, so to speak, like if... Well, if I think, yeah, I th well, I think that's probably overstating the case, but I, I, f I feel they were concerned. And, you know, if you've got a relative who is seriously ill, you might be worrying that that's what's going on. Right. Now, um, do you know what the present status is with if there's any other drives in, in, in to trying to get the law still changed or? Well, I know, I know the BMA. Uh, That's the British Medical British Association. Association. Have in the past been pushing. Proactive. Yes, I understand that there's about 75 to 80 percent of their members that are for it. Is I'm, that, I'm not sure exactly what the figure is. But it is a pretty I high, I mean, as, yeah. as mm -hmm. the BMA as an association, they do endorse. Well, they, they certainly have done. But they I'm have not done. Aware that. That they've changed their mind. Right, yeah. right. So there, there possibly could still be uh, plans or, or uh, of, you know, trying to seek another way on how to. Well, I'm sure there are some people that are still trying to do that, but I'm not sure that. I think really the the sort of bill last year dealt with it a bit, and I think it may be a while before. Um, that government is going to look at that again. Right. That's, that's my. Right. Now, just you as a person, um, how many people do you run across, like since you've taken on this uh, role, yes. um, how many people have you sort of run across in, during that time uh, that have talked about this issue, you know, the, the law? Has there been a small amount, a big amount? Um, well, some of our members talk about it because it it is important for some of them, you know, especially the ones who've lost family members while they've been waiting for organs. Um, but we haven't made it a huge issue, really. Right. We are very supportive of, of the register. Of the register. And we, we do, in our magazine, we, we talk about the register and we give details to people about how to register and where to go to register. Um, so but we're supportive of the register. Right. Um, now... I guess the uh, the uh, I guess 
the uh, the uh, idea of of working with the present system, you know, the registry and and everything is is in place and trying to do everything you possibly can. But does your organization have any other? Uh, does your organizations uh, have any other plan to investigate other means of trying to? Uh, you know, increase the rate. Like, is there? England has a very poor rate right now. I think it's. I think there are twenty percent of people are on the register, but I know that doesn't necessarily mean that. No, you know, that, no. That so the the way it turns out, though, at the end, is that mm -hmm. the people that are receiving these precious gifts is much lower than most other countries in Europe, and you know. Um, so knowing that, mm. uh, it. Is there any other ideas or plans to try and address that? In, in this country? In this country. Um, well, I know the government um, is spending money on sort of donor liaison nurses. They think there's a route to go down to... Um, I think that's a bit like the Spanish model, where um, there are more um, sort of trained people to, to handle families at these difficult times. Um, and to encourage them to donate organs from their loved ones, yes. So, in your opinion, your personal opinion, would you like to see more done about this? Or do you think there's enough being done? I, th I think it's a very difficult area. And I think people need to be sure that, that um, their loved ones want to donate and that they're happy with it. It's, it's a very stressful time for them. Um, and I think it would be a shame if we got into a situation where organs were being taken from people and their relatives didn't want it to happen. Now, I just on that note, any doctor that would uh, do that would get prose persecuted just like any other person committing a crime, because that is a criminal offense. Is that correct? Like if a doctor yeah, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on, on that, but on that it, it's right. most that's mostly the case in... Mm. in uh, hospital communities you know most countries so it would probably be it, it would be actually a doctor that would uh, jump to doing something like that is committing committing a criminal offense so um, I think there's there should be a lot more uh, discussions I guess yes, I think I think maybe the government's hoping for that going along the lines of having more more discussions and nurses, more people um, who can help the families to make the decision that that's right for them really and that may be right for the, the yeah. person that's died if that's what they want to donate their organs yeah. well i think that's what every country has in mind is mm. to try and develop the best system possible so um i think should always try and keep an open mind yeah. to see on what could be available and and you know to pursue as 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 much as possible in the area of, of uh, uh, you know, getting the best possible solution. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. I guess... Uh, I mean, I know, the, I know the government as well did have a scheme where they were trying to encourage people to join the register through various channels, including, um, I think it was um, when they applied for new driving licenses and things like that. Um, I don't know how successful that's been. I think they were doing a pilot on that. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we tried that in, in Canada. It didn't work right. too well. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think uh, this, it should be a topic open for discussion, yes. you know, and yeah. you can't fault anybody for trying to make things better, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So uh, any ideas are always good ideas. You just explore them and see if they'll work or not. Yeah. Well, I guess that should wrap it up. Um, I uh, we're trying to, you know, just get different opinions and perspectives, and and then kind of piece them all together afterwards. So, thank you for your interview.